Before we begin, I would take this opportunity to thank my community. In my previous video about relic farming, I did miss a certain mission which makes farming axxi relics trivial right now. I would thank those people who pointed out that this method is faster and better. So, thank you for rectifying the mistakes of your noob leader. That is why I will try to redeem myself on this video giving you the right way to farm those Axxi relics plus more. So previously, I did mention that Xenion Eris was the best when it comes to farming Axxi relics. Well, I was wrong. You can farm Axxi relics in this mission but, disruption is so much better since it can give you guaranteed Axxi relics every time, and it takes 4 minutes to do this mission, and get one guaranteed relic. The best part is, you can go endless on this mission, and just farm relics all day. The trick here is knowing when to defend a conduit. Disruption does not follow the traditional rotation for endless missions. The reward tier is determined by both round progression and round performance. In each round, your rewards will be determined by the number of conduits you defended. Now let's take for example the disruption node on Liu called Apollo. Tier rewards offer Neo relics, tier B offers all Axxi relics, while tier C gives you Axxi and either Liu Alen's blueprint or universal medallion. Knowing the fact the rewards for each round is different, and depends on the number of conduit defended will surely make a big difference. As if you want only to farm Axxi relics, you can do this trick, defend all four conduits in the first round, then just three on the second round, two conduits on the third round, and just defend at least one conduit on round four and endless. This way you will get constant Axxi relic drops for each round. Now you can finish the first round of this mission in about four minutes but, why stop there? Why not just farm endlessly until you are satisfied? But squad leader, this mission is hard when with all those conduit effects and high level enemies. That's a fact. But like I always said, everything in this game can be done solo with the perfect setup. To tell you honestly, doing a solo endless disruption guide is part of my list but, it got dragged to the bottom since I was thinking, why would people even bother doing this mission endlessly? Well, I was dumb enough, not research more about this game mode. It certainly is a loot cave when it comes to farming relics. So anyway, the perfect solo setup I will suggest when running this game mode solo, or even with a team, is an Ikana life steal in arrows. The idea is simple, maximum survivability so you can farm for as long as you want. Disruption mission has no life support, nor target that needs defending against all enemies. It's all about getting a key, putting it on the conduit, and killing those amalgam units who will try to destroy it. In arrows offer maximum survivability for this mission, as you won't need to worry about being killed by high level enemies, or those debuff coming from conduits. In terms of modding, just go with possibly all survivability mods, then his negation swarm augment. This augment will help you get rid of those status effects plus that pesky knockdown which you will most likely experience from enemies on this mission. Deku is just supplementary for this setup. The only thing you need from this bow is the amalgam Deku target acquired mod, so Yonikana can do life steal. On the other hand, Nikana is a must, since this will be our main DPS weapon, and the main item that will support in arrows to stay alive at high level. Any Nikana would do for this setup. In fact, a Nikana Zor would fit well this setup. Yes, thank god that it's now working. I just don't get it that the amalgam mod for Deku wasn't working with this Zor variant. Zors are supposed to be custom made melee weapons and, Nikana Zors are custom build Nikanas. So obviously, the mod should work with this Nikana's alright? Okay, enough with the rant. Let's proceed with the mod setup. For the build, I usually go with the usual hybrid critical and status build. Of course, I add condition overload and organ shatter for more damage buff. Berserker for attack speed, and primed reach for more range. The two dual status mods are replaceable, and you can interchange it with other dual status mods, to form the element weakness for a certain faction. The good thing about using an Ikana Zor is you can equip it with Exodia Arcane. In my case, I'm using Exodia Triumph for the additional combo chance. But you can use Exodia Epidemic for this mission, as it's somehow useful against the Amalgam units. It lifts those units to air, giving you time for free hits. As you can see on my Nikana build, I'm not using any combo time extender mods. It's because, I'm using the Nariman Focus for this setup. Since Inaros doesn't need energy to tank. 
it would be wise to pick Nariman for the combo counter while using the power spike passive. Zenuric would be a good option not just for energy regeneration, but also for its ability to significantly slow down the amalgam units with the help of temporal blast. But then again, there's a certain debuff that depletes your energy on this mission. So, any energy regeneration mod or abilities will surely be ineffective. The best counter for amalgam units is Magus Lockdown. This operator arcane will stun lock amalgam units for a couple of seconds, giving you enough time to kill it before it can even reach the conduit. The best part is, it doesn't require you to sacrifice using your favorite arcane, or the needed focus school for this setup. Now if we truly dig deeper, we can find that Apollo on Liu is possibly not the only disruption mission that can give us tons of relics. The disruption mission on Olympus Mars can give us a hefty amount of lith relics if we decided to grind for tier B rewards endlessly. Er on Uranus also is a possible loot cave for relics. This mission's tier A and tier B rewards are not diluted with any other drops and only give you Meso and Neo relics respectively. The same goes with the disruption mission on Kelpie Sedna. Tira rewards you with Meso relics, Tier B with Neo relics, and Tier B with Axxi relics. These disruption missions are an option but, I would still recommend the capture missions on Void if you want to get Lith, Meso, and Neo fast. It would only take a minute to get one relic per run on both Hepit and Yuko. To sum it all up, Hepit for Lith relics, Yuko for Neo and Meso relics, while Apollo on Liu is the best when it comes to farming Axxi relics. Just a quick tip before we end this video. Always turn on sound for the game so you can hear the beeping sound that the amalgam units are making. This way, you can easily locate them and kill them fast. If not, then just wait for them on the conduit. Cast Magus Lockdown if you spot them, then rip them apart. That's all for today lads. Thank you all for your support, and I hope that you find this video informative. Please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more Warframe videos and giveaways. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. the future. is the future. Human error. Evolution. This is the future.